In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, there was a great schism in left-wing thought. The split was between the Marxists and those who came to be known and derided as the revisionists. And the battle lines were drawn in France and in Eastern Europe, which were the twin hotbeds of socialist thought. The Marxists sought revolution and the overthrow of the existing system in a violent upheaval, with many advocating a general strike to cripple the existing system first. But the revisionists, like Jean Jaurès and Alexandre Millerand in France, had perceived a different route to improving life for the workers. They wanted pressure through conventional channels to win immediate reform of working conditions and a gradual transfer of power to the working classes. They sought better conditions, better pay and a vote, and believed that public and parliamentary pressure could win these changes for the masses. To the east, there was some cross-pollination between Germany and Russia. The greatest revisionist thinkers there were the German Eduard Bernstein and Russia's Peter Struve. They argued that capitalism, contrary to the expectations of Marx, was not impoverishing the workers. They thus suggested that it was possible to reconcile it with the socialist goals within a system of parliamentary democracy. Bernstein argued that socialism was doomed to failure if it relied on capitalism bringing the economy to ruin first. And he was appalled by the idea of violent revolution. He stressed that peaceful reform was a far preferable course and that the sort of wars, revolutions and economic catastrophes advocated by the Marxists would be ruinous for the working classes. For this, he was denounced by the mainstream activists. Plekhanov, Kortsky, Otto Bauer, Yuli Martov and Rosa Luxemburg denounced Bernstein and Struve violently condemning them at every opportunity. Lenin wrote an entire book to repudiate Bernstein's heresy. And when Trotsky argued that socialism's ability to conscript labour gave it an advantage in efficiency over capitalism, Bernstein warned him that forced labour would be unproductive. Trotsky scoffed that, if this is so, then you can put a cross over socialism. He denounced the pair as well. And the revisionist label was used to justify repeated massacres under Stalin, Mao and Pol Pot. Lenin was adamant that he was utterly correct in his drive to violently overthrow autocracy and to impose socialism, while Bernstein was simply wrong to agitate for a Burkean programme of political and economic reform. Yet in reality, Bernstein's course resulted in spectacular progress for the working man, while Lenin's led to oppression, slavery, censorship, famine and murder on a colossal scale. Bernstein and Struve were entirely right. They saw that the promised collapse of capitalism was an illusion and that socialism should pursue a path of moderate reform instead. They proposed an alliance between proletariat, peasantry and petty bourgeois to achieve the global spread of democracy, equality and welfare. And that exact route was trodden by the most successful societies in history. Subsequent events have vindicated them completely. Yet the radicals of the day poured scorn on their ideas and penned bile-filled personal attacks. They argued that if the moderates were right, then socialism would be proven to be redundant. It was a result so alarming that they could not contemplate it. Even though Bernstein's conclusions were clearly more beneficial to the working classes than the violent revolutions, economic catastrophes and society breaking events that they craved. They would rather see the poor suffer than admit that they might be wrong. But of course... It was Bernstein and Struve who were on the right side of history. The path they recommended led to peace and prosperity. That chosen by their numerous critics 
unleash catastrophic oppression, famine and death. Yet the certainty and arrogance of those responsible, and those who followed in their footsteps, remained unaffected. And this approach is still winning the fight, for the movement continues to hate revisionists and deviationists with the same intolerant fury. It's still considered preferable to denounce heretics rather than accept that outsiders may sometimes offer practical solutions. The likes of Marx and Lenin are still celebrated and trumpeted by all the radical activists on Twitter. But Bernstein and Struve have been completely forgotten. It's a damning indictment of the movement. If the left had followed Bernstein and Struve instead of Marx and Lenin, then a whole century of bloodshed could have been avoided. It's the most vital lesson in the entire history of the movement. Yet it's been completely ignored. And that's unlikely to change. The radicals will simply carry on making the same mistakes that their predecessors have made for centuries. And they'll continue being absolutely certain that they are doing the right thing. If you've enjoyed this film, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in these topics, I've written two books which go into them in extensive detail. They're called The Tyranny of the Left, and they're available on the links below. Please feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.